Hello and welcome back to Gorilla Biker and today uh, we're doing a video that I've been quite excited about and it's uh, fitting this rear rack uh, to the Z900RS. Why the rear rack? Um, I wanted the grab handle. So people who've watched the original, um, my brain's turning off, the original video I did uh, reviewing a Z900RS years ago now with Freeman Motorcycles, they had that chrome grab rail at the back. And I really liked that. And ever since I bought this one, it's like I felt there's something that I wasn't missing per se, but I was like, the, the back looks emptier than I wanted. Um, so in the end, I put it up to vote and uh, the patrons voted and also contributed mostly to paying for it through their patronage. Um, Honored the black Hepco and Becker rear rack, which I actually really like to be honest. I do like the look of it a lot, probably more than the chrome grab rail. Um, and also it's more functional because you know, you can hide behind it like this and protect your eyes or, and also leave, leave, leave things on it also. <laughs> so uh, without further ado, let's read the instructions that Hepco and Becker provided and then fit this bad boy. So this is the, ooh. Hold on a second, there we go. This is the second product I have from Hepco and Becker now. Uh, both bought from motomachines.com. Um, and so far, like I mean, the quality on that product, again, is really good. Uh, and I have paid for these, not obviously 100% myself, because the patrons helped, um, but it is actual money going out on it, money that uh, I care more about than money that is just coming from my pocket, because those the patrons mean a lot to me. Anyway, so. Disassemble the seat and disconnect the indicator cables. Remove the fairing parts. What fairing parts? Remove the fairing parts. First remove the two Phillips screws underneath the rear. The four screws under the seat must also be removed. So let's first and foremost go to step one and we're gonna do that. So to remove the seat on the Z900RS, it's pretty basic like a lot of seats. Just turn the key, pull up. It doesn't want to come out. There you go, and there you go. Next, let's have a little look. It wants us to unplug, oh it obviously means this fairing piece here, okay. There's one, two, three, four. Hopefully you guys can see those. So just to show you on the phone, there's one, two, three, four. And then I assume there's one, Two. So those are the six they're talking about. Take that out of there so don't smash it. Um, so let's get to removing those. So just I'll try to show you. There's actually two more screws in there. Right there. I think I'm gonna try to take those out as well. Because it looks to me like something's still holding this on and I really don't want to break it. So let's try take those two out. We've already got these guys out. Let's see what happens. There's some rubber grommets here. Okay. One, two, okay. It feels like it's holding on. Just wanna make sure I don't break this. It looks like it's just a... Yeah, just a grommet. Oh, we have some spider webs. Look, some webbies. Um, I'm going to clean all in here before I put it back together as well because it's a bit, a bit dirty. So generally your left and right indicators are colour coded like this. Um, so I'm pretty certain that's them. But we'll, we'll give it a go. Because I think it wants me to take this plate off down here. Um, which will be interesting because I'll have to take this off to get to it. But we'll figure it out as we go. So once I have this out of the way, it wants me to remove these four here. This is so dirty, so dirty. Move that out of the way too. Uh, so these four here, which I'm assuming it actually wants us to unplug, hey, these three cables here, because we'll have to route them back through that. So we'll do the cables and then we'll do this. 
Oh, I like, I like working on new bikes. <laughs> that usually doesn't happen for me. Released, and we just want to pull them out from behind that bar. And hopefully, this all goes back together just smoothly. That's pretty nice and neat. All right, so these ones next. Well, that worked. <laughs> So thankfully there is a tire here to catch everything, um, but it didn't really burn you. Now I should have also figured it out for myself, but this is what we were trying to get out of here. And what I'm guessing is this guy here, we're going to replace with a support bar here. Now that that's off, let's read the next instruction. Now replace the original reflector holder with the supplied rear adapter at the top. Screw it together with the license plate holder. Back on again, past the turn signal player, direct rear and connect the plug. All right, we can do that. Let's do it. So just to point out, there is a little retainer screw right here that also needs to come out that they don't mention, but just so you're aware of it. It, voila, it's off. Be aware, this frame underneath here where your uh, your screws actually, your bolts actually bolt into, um, will fall away when you take out that screw. That screw is the last retention for that, so just don't drop it. So there we have it, that's that plate fitted back on. You wanna do it with these flaps facing kind of down. Um, and now, I don't know why I did that. Was that stupid? I think that was stupid. No, it wasn't stupid, I am right, okay. So now what we wanna do is feed these cables back up like so. Really poor job, Michael, here. Making it look difficult when it's not. And when we get this kind of located, and it should more, more or less kind of auto-locate itself, I just want to get a bolt in there now. Yeah. Which is, uh, Difficult. Well, it's not really difficult. Actually, before I do that, I'm just gonna check the floppiness in this. I think it probably got damaged when it was, when the bike was previously dropped. It's the right side, it's the, the correct side that it was dropped on so it would match up. All right. It's quite warm in here tonight. And I'm guessing it probably says it, uh, in there, well, usually it doesn't have going Becker stuff so far. Don't tighten all these up yet, because there's going to be a bit of uh, jiggling to get everything to fit nicely, I would assume. Here we are, okay. Remove the left and right alu pins. So the alu pins are these guys here, which I'm guessing are probably also a size six or five, are they five? No, they're six, okay. So like I said, six Allen and just Pop these out with some unpleasant noises attached. All right, give me one second because before I start putting back together, I need to wipe this off. Okay, so the alley pins are removed and fit the rack using Allen screws M8 by 35. So I'm guessing that's just for these front. Two is M8 by 35, so let's find them in the kit. Okay, so the two M8 by 35s are in the kit, as specified. Um, this is all the bits you get. Most of these are actually for remounting the reflectors if you want to, I don't. Um, and because the last ones sounded so terrible coming coming out, I'm gonna put a little bit of, uh, of thread seal on these guys. Um, or you can put anti-seize, whichever you prefer, just so they don't sound, get stuck in there. Now we got a little bit of anti-seize on these guys, and we're gonna fit up the rack a little bit. So those of you who are super smart like me, would have already figured out those bits rest on there. 
And we obviously have to slide that one there. Hopefully you can see that, yes you can. So where those alu pins came out, that's where this guy goes on. And we're just gonna loosely get the bolts in here first. So I can line everything up. Oh, this is gonna look great. This is gonna look really good. I'm not really sure how I'm gonna get fairing back underneath that. Does, does it say for you in the fairing? Hmm. Okay, so one thing this doesn't really say is to refit everything, but I'm gonna turn off the camera real quick and refit all of this stuff first, because um, I think I think at this point it's necessary. So I'm just gonna tighten up everything. Uh, yeah, I don't really see how else I get the fairing back in there without having this actually off. So let's do that. Okay, so, I'm oh, sorry, ignore my sweat. Uh, everything is back together. Um, these bolts tighten up, cables are rerouted. These bolts are all tightened up with this little flappy flooper. Goes from here, underneath here, and all the bolts together nice and solid. Now, this grommet right here actually came out on the fairing. And the cool thing about this is, is if you try to refit it, just make sure it's fully seated because it actually falls into a closed in channel. I'm not sure why Kawasaki would do that, but let's throw back on the ferry. Uh, so you're on the iPhone right now. Not that, I mean, iPhone's actually pretty good for this stuff, to be honest. So, grommet number one. Grommet number two. It's not gonna pop out as on as again. It didn't, yay. And grommet, sorry, grommet number three requires a bit of force, so I'm just gonna put you down real quick. You can look at the air and say, we'll try it. I'm sure it's gonna work. Oh, I think that grommet's actually coming out too. Oh my God. This grommet has popped out again. And this grommet is dying a death, so I'm gonna have to get new ones of these. This kind of is annoying. They really shouldn't be failing this early in life. Okay, so I'll get this grommet fished back out again and fitted, and then hopefully we'll be done. Alrighty, well that was a chore to get these grommets to stick, so if anyone knows where to buy new grommets, let me know. Lastly, and I will apply some anti-seize to these as well, these bolts here, you gonna focus? There we go. These bolts here are uh, to go through here into the bottom end of this guy right here. So let's do that and then we can start tightening everything up. Ooh, clearance. These ugly warning stickers also came on it, so anyone who's wondering, max load is 11 pounds apparently, which we'll be ignoring. That's us complete, and I think that looks great. Um, one thing I will say is, Hepco and Becker, well, number one, these stickers, they don't need to be on there. I mean, that's, I'm gonna take that one off too. But that looks absolutely fantastic. I mean, you would not know that that's not a stock item. Um, so I'm gonna clean up here really quick and we'll close out this video. Okay, so if I look like I'm covered in sweat, it's uh, it's because I am. It's not even hot tonight, it's just, it's just humid. It's North Carolina. Uh, that's how people live here. <laughs> but, um, so to finish off, that's the Hepcom Becker rear rack installed. Um, I think it looks great. Once again, patrons, thank you so much. Uh, wouldn't have, I wouldn't have that on the bike without you guys because you know, we've just moved house and moving house is incredibly expensive, even when it's just renting. Um, but yeah, would I recommend it? Based off a first look, yes, very high quality. Um, went together very well. Pep Comebacker supply really good hardware, like bolts and whatnot. Their instructions are top notch. They do give torque specifications, but I, I just went the old hand torque on that stuff. Um, really, really, really impressive stuff from Hepcom Becker. And, 
Part of the reason why I've bought two smaller items from Heco and Becker is I'm still, like I mentioned in a recent video, trying to describe, def describe, define what panniers I want. And I think based off the quality of the stuff I've seen from them so far, I think I would be happy investing in Hepco and Becker. Even though it is a lot of money, I think the end result would be panniers that I can keep for a long, long, long time, which is the goal. Um, so I think that's my decision made from, from product number two. They just, they seem to make very, very good quality stuff. So Hepco and Becker, now it's very unlikely you ever see this video, but two thumbs up for me, really impressive stuff, really good quality stuff. And I also think it looks absolutely fantastic. Um, I am gonna probably take your sticker off the one, sorry, because I'm not a sticker person on my bikes. Um, <laughs> you know, my, my wife, Toaster, will tell you that uh, when I see stickers on paint on cars, it upsets me. Don't put stickers on paint, please. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's your car, do what you like, um, <laughs> really. But yeah, that's it. Uh, ease of install, I would give it like eight out of 10 on the easy points. You know, you do have to be careful if you wanna drop your fairings, scratch your fairings break plastics and stuff, so you do have to be careful about that. The, honestly, the worst part about that job was the grommets, um, the fact that two of them popped out and broke, so I'm gonna look for new ones just so I have them, um, because I am gonna be popping that on and off, I'm sure, again, in the future, as we make new additions and whatnot. Um, but yeah, eight out of 10 on the ease of ease of fitting scale, anyone can do this, you need a couple of Allen keys, you know, a size 10 spanner or ratchet or socket, and a Phillips head screwdriver and some anti-seize, that's, that's really about it. And a torque wrench if you want to do all the torques, but I don't think it's necessary for that uh, item. So yeah, um, if you watch, thank you very much for watching. Please do let me know what you think this looks like, uh, what you think of the, the, the look on the bike. And would you buy one for your Z900 RS if you have a Z900 RS? Yeah, let me know. Um, as always, a massive thank you to all of my patrons. I really do appreciate you all. And as I said, the patrons did massively contribute uh, through their contributions to the channel, to the, the, the possibleness of purchasing this. I could say that in better English, but I'm not going to. Um, and yeah, until next time, thank you all again for watching. Adios. Outro crew, what would you think of a rear rack for a bike like this? I know technically it's more like of a sporty bike, but for me, I love the retro style, and I think a lot of older retro bikes um, tend tended to have something to carry luggage on, especially UGMs, because UGMs, which is Universal Japanese Motorcycle, by the way, they were a do-it-all bike. So, you know, now I feel like I can strap a backpack down quite easily and not scratch my fairings and stuff. So really looking forward to actually trying this out uh, practicality-wise and, and see how we go. Um, yeah, that's it. Bye, Outro Crew.